Hey everyone, welcome back to Bumblebee. Hey Dewey, have you ever looked at a banana and thought, wow, that's a weird looking thing? You know what, I actually looked at a lot of fruit and a lot of things, I'm like, that's, that's pretty weird. Yeah, like who thought, you know what, I wanna put that in my mouth and see if I don't die. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, honestly, I don't know, cause it's, uh, it's a pretty weird thing, but you know what, I think it's because bananas actually used to look way different. They did, and that's, in <laughs> they did, and that's exactly <laughs> What we're gonna be talking about today on our top 10 foods that used to look way different. Let's get to it. Number 10, B A N A N A S. I mentioned it, you knew I was gonna bring it up. This fruit is one of the most commercially famous fruits, I think, from being a phrase like, this is bananas, to Gwen Stefani giving us a way to remember how to spell it, to being Curious George's food of choice. The world is simply bananas for bananas, but they're also kind of the poster child for genetic modification. If you were to go back and take a pick of a wild banana, you would be surprised to find that they look barely anything like the fleshy, bright yellow ones we have now. In fact, they were stubbier, were full of seeds, barely any fruity goodness at all. The first bananas are suspected to have grown in Malaya Peninsula in Indonesia, the Philippines, and New Guinea around 10,000 years ago. But the bananas we know today are thanks to the crossbreeding that happened in Africa in 650 AD. Through this process, some of them became seedless and closer to the ones we love today. At number nine, we have eggplants. You know the fun purple giant vegetable looking emoji that we all use as a front for uh, <laughs> other vegetable looking things? Well, they never actually used to look like that. Wild eggplants actually used to look like small, round, and white eggs attached to a plant. Hence the name, eggplant. Eggplants also used to have spines instead of stems and were originally used for medicinal purposes. Over the years though, countries such as China, India, and Thailand have cultivated the eggplant into the delicious purple vegetable we all know and love today. And that makes a lot more sense. I always wondered why it was called an eggplant because it looks nothing like an egg. It looks kind of more like a, Moving on. Number eight, corn. Corn on the cob, popcorn, corny jokes. Corn is one of the most invaluable sources of food we've ever had as human beings. It's a sacred crop in many ways. But if you think it's always been the sweet corn you're used to having at barbecues, it wouldn't be on this list. North American sweet corn was bred over thousands of years from its inedible ancestor, the teosid plant. The first domesticated corn from 7000 BC was dry and hard like a raw potato. The first domestication of corn can be traced back 10,000 years ago to native Mexico. European settlers also started cultivating crop in the 15th century and slowly but surely the crop became what it is today. It is now a thousand times larger than its great great grandparent and has a higher sugar content to suit all your summertime needs. At our number seven spot, we have everyone's favorite veggie in the veggie tray, carrots. Carrots have actually made a dramatic transformation over the past thousand years. Originally, wild carrots found in Persia were actually very thin. Sometimes they were white, sometimes they were purple, and parts of them were green, and sometimes they were even plaid. Just kidding. So how did the world end up with the orange carrot that we all know and love today? Well, we can thank the Dutch for this one. Back in the 1600s, Dutch farmers bred large orange carrots. Why? Because the Dutch wanted to make it as a tribute to William of Orange, the great man that's responsible for leading the Netherlands to their independence. What a great tribute. Dewey, thank you so much for your service. We shall now only grow yellow broccoli for the rest of your time. Thanks. Number six, peaches. Fun fact, peaches are actually my favorite fruit. And I'm not just saying that to help support Lindsay Ivan's new channel, Peach. Love you, Lindsay. They actually are, I love them. But did you know they weren't always fuzzy or even delicious? A wild natural peach kind of looks like a cherry and tasted like a lentil. It used to be small, made up of mostly stone slash seed, was only found in China, and the skin was waxy and barely edible. Again, like who thought, you know what? If we keep growing that, that's gonna taste delicious. Like who thought that? Well, apparently they did. Around 4,000 BC, farmers in China began domesticating the fruit and it took only the seeds from the sweetest fruits and grew them. It took 6,000 years through artificial selection to grow peaches that were juicier, six times larger, and 4% sweeter than their ancestors. Their skin eventually became edible, the soft, fuzzy one we know now, and they even had a spike in nutrients. It's amazing that they saw so much potential in this fruit that they stuck with it for thousands of years just so it could reach the perfect point. I wish I had that much faith in myself. Coming in at our number five spot and halfway point, we have 
free shavakadu, aka avocados. Just like most fruits and veggies, us humans have found ways to grow them outside of their natural habitats and have used science and other things to make food bigger, larger, tastier, and last longer. Avocados are not excluded from that list. Real avocados that still grow in the wild are much, much different than the ones that we eat and love today. Wild avocados actually have a much harder shell, a much larger pit in the center, and also have much less of that delicious green stuff that we all crave. It would actually take about 10 wild avocados to get the same amount of the delicious green stuff we put on our toast, or even on our guacamole. Man, that sounds like a lot of work. But fun fact, I used to actually hate guacamole and my ex would make it all the time. And now, I love guacamole and have no one to make it for me. So that's, uh, that's cool. Number four, watermelon. Watermelon was and probably is the staple fruit that moms bring to soccer games after sliced oranges. The superior choice, if you ask me. Watermelon, not the oranges. I think it's sticky. They're thirst quenching and not too sticky, which is key when you're about to risk getting kicked in the stomach by the ball. That was me. But a few thousand years ago, not a chance. Archaeologists have found 5,000 year old watermelon seeds in Libya, as well as in Egyptian tombs, including the one belonging to the guy, the one, the only King Tut. They were prized for their ability to hold water, which remains true today. But like many on this list, they used to be bitter with far less flesh to consume. Imagine an entire watermelon made out of the white stuff close to the rind. Kind of like that. But of course, with patience and careful selection, cultivators only grew the ones that exceeded expectations, which has allowed for them to develop their sweet red interior. And starting us off in our top three, at number three, we have strawberries. Strawberries taste like strawberries. The snozberries taste like snozberries. The dewberries taste like dewberries. <laughs> See, see, see what I did there? <laughs> Dewberries are obviously a real fruit that I created, in case you were wondering, but back on topic, strawberries have gone through quite the transformation over the years, and maybe not for the better. Original strawberries were much smaller than the ones that we eat today, but they were also much sweeter too but not as sweet as a dewberry. The modern strawberry lost some of its sweetness because farmers became more focused on growing larger ones, thus creating a better appearance, but maybe not a better taste. Chilean strawberries were also brought over to Europe by French spies because they were much larger than any already found in Europe. Thus, the modern strawberry was born. Some may think it's a good thing that they aren't as sweet because it may have been too sweet when dipped in chocolate, but to me, <laughs> there's no such thing as too sweet. Number two, marshmallows, right? What? Did you know marshmallows used to be a plant? Yeah, that's right. Actually, they technically still are. There are still marshmallow plants. Yes, that's right. If you went back in time to ancient Egypt and figured out how to ask for a marshmallow in ancient Egyptian, they would have handed you a flower, kind of. In 2000 BC, the ancient Egyptians found a plant that excreted a sap that could combine with honey to make a type of candy. So good, the pharaohs worshipped it. Then in the 1800s, confectioners in France combined the marshmallow sap with egg whites and sugar to make the earliest version of the campfire delight we know today. This same combo was also used as medicine for toothaches at the time as well. Then in 1927, the Girl Scouts invented the s'more and the rest is history. And finally, at our number one spot, the fruit that brought us our favorite pizza, spaghetti, ketchup, tomato soup, and grilled cheese. I guess I said it, tomatoes. Ancestors to the great tomato actually used to be closer to the size of a berry, as well varied in colors. The original tomatoes that were most popular were the small yellow ones. The original wild tomatoes were actually called golden apples, which is where the Italian word for tomato got its name, pomodoro. After the next evolving tomato were the small and cute cherry tomatoes. Cherry tomatoes were the ones that were bred to become the large red tomatoes that we all know today. Why? Well, for the same reason as the strawberry. Farmers wanted bigger and better foods, but once again, some of the original taste was lost. If you wanna get close to the original taste of tomatoes, try an heirloom tomato, and you'll get just a bit of that original flavor back. Interesting. Interesting. I hope you're hungry now, because I certainly am. I haven't had lunch yet. Have you not? No. Did you not go on your break? No. Mm, girl? Mm -hmm. I'm busy. I'm too excited to make lists, okay? <laughs> God, get off my back. I love lists. Anyways, guys, if you like this video, make sure to 
Join the hive and yeah. like and subscribe. I'm kidding, subscribe down below. And don't forget to shoot us a comments down. <laughs> and don't forget to shoot us a comment down below and ask us some questions, ask us uh, what other videos you wanna see, and also maybe uh, let us know which one of these uh, uh, foods was your favorite. Yeah, or like challenge us, give us some bee puns. Yeah. Make us throw up with bee puns. Challenge okay? us to a fight, we'll, we'll do, do it. it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Anyways, guys, I've been your host, Rachel Fisher. And I've been your host, Dewey Stewart, and we will see you all back here very soon. And until next time, buzz, buzz off. off.